What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Marvel Cast. Today, I'm joined by a special guest, Alan Lau of Lau Strength and the host of the World of Lifting podcast. We hope you enjoy this episode, so let's check it out. All right, welcome back to another Marvel Cast. I'm Joe Marble. Today, I'm joined by Alan Lau, the World of Lifting podcast host. Alan, what's going on, brother? I'm doing good. Thanks for uh, having me on this podcast. Thanks for coming on this podcast. You had me on a few weeks ago. It was awesome. So <laughs> I had to return the favor. Yeah. Well, it was part of our agreement, the little collaboration. So it would have been, been mean if, we, if you didn't have me on. <laughs> I, oh, absolutely. The, the funny thing is that when you text me that day, I was literally staring at your Instagram being like, I want to ask this guy to be on my podcast. But like, yeah. I'll just wait a little bit. We'll see what happens. And then you text me first. It was so funny. Yeah, funny how they. I mean, yeah, I know you followed me first, and then I found out you had a podcast and that it was like Olympic weightlifting, cross the two worlds, powerlifting, Olympic weight, Olympic weightlifting, CrossFit. And I was like, yeah, it would have been cool to give the viewers something different. I, I hope you got Olympic something different out of mine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people don't, because um, you talked about you owning the gym, right? Yeah. Um, and you know, it's not exact. It's, you struggled, but then you kind of didn't really struggle because, like, it's always a struggle, man. It's always a struggle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know anything about owning a business, so. <laughs> well, you're owning a podcast, so hopefully it becomes a business soon. Yeah. So yeah, let's talk hopefully. about that real quick. Let's talk about a little bit of your background. Um, so you did some wrestling in high school. Did you wrestle in college? Are you, you're still in college right now, right? Yeah, I'm. I'm still in college right now. Um, I wrestled for like a week <laughs> in uh, in college, and I was like, "Oh man, f this! Like this is uh, it's a little too much." And um, the school that I went to transitioned into Division One. And if anybody is a wrestler out there, Division Two to Division One is um, it's pretty big. Um, yeah, you're talking wrestlers like Yanni um Trying to think of other people, uh, Bo Nickel. Have you ever heard of those? I mean, obviously, I'm, I won't be wrestling people like those, but. Just Division Two to Division One, the level of competition that is in those tournaments is just—it's uh, insane. I never really—I didn't make it to a match, so it didn't really matter. I just left um, as soon as I joined, which is kind of weird and kind of. Uh, but whatever, I got it's better. With it. It's better that way, though, in a sense. Like the coach will appreciate you just walking out the door because now he doesn't have to deal with you half in, half out. So you <laughs> yeah, went there. Yeah, true. Maybe you you spent a week. You saw it wasn't for you. All right. I'll see you later. This ain't for me. That's, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. But it was weird because it was like, it was technically on my own terms, retiring from wrestling. Um, but at the same time, it wasn't. Um, it's It kind of sucks that you had, I had to leave because I just wasn't as good enough, you know? And, you know, we could talk about this too. I had a really messed up, destroyed shoulder at the time. So... I didn't really want to risk injuring that again. There was a lot of factors that went into to quitting that sport. And I love that sport. It taught me a lot of things about life. How know? long did you wrestle? I started in junior year of high school. So, actually, no, sophomore. End of sophomore year. Uh, so, maybe two and a half, three, close to three years, you know. Oh, so I, I wrestled just about a little less than you. I started my junior year and wrestled. I only wrestled the two years, junior and senior. And I yeah. was okay for PSAL standards. If anybody knows uh, Public School Athletic League from New York City, they used to be really horrible in terms of <laughs> wrestling or any sports, city sports, other than basketball and baseball and soccer was pretty decent. But you go upstate New York, even Long Island, the talent is absurd. It's such a drastic change to go from the city to the upstate New York division and states is crazy. Yeah, Long Island. I mean, I know from my section, it was called Section 8. Um, I don't know what the other... Se I mean, they're all numbered off. Section 8 is Nassau County, I think. Pretty sure Nassau and Suffolk. I don't know. But yeah. uh, the talent the talent pool in Long Island is, like, just insane. There was, like... Um, if anybody knows of a Sen Wrestling Club and, like... Uh, uh, crap, what's the name? Volgar. Uh, Vitalia Rujao. He was, like... A world champion, bronze medalist at the Olympics, and he's in Long Island, and he's training wrestlers. So people coming out of there and ascend, they're just savages, <laughs> freaking savages. Did you ever go so, yeah. to the New York Athletic Club in the city? 
Oh man, I knew one of the coaches there. Well, I, I'm pretty sure he was one of the coaches. Yeah, he told me to come down. I never went down there. Like I got a free T-shirt and stuff. Like right. he trained me at another gym. Uh, but he, I never directly went to the, the NYAC, which so, uh, kind of regret that. The cool thing about going there, I I went there for a few few practices because we would end practice around seven o'clock and then seven o'clock get on the train, go to the city and practice for another two hours. Um, went there and they said you needed a USA weight, um, not weightlifting wrestling card to get in, but we just walked in the back door and just went up to the wrestling room. Nobody seemed to give a shit. There was the fencing team and there was a bunch of just, it was basically like open floor wrestling for anybody that was there. Uh, there was a lot of really good Greco guys and it, it was, it was different so you get out of your wrestling room in high school and you go to this like adult wrestling room and it's just like a whole different world yeah the savages like i actually wanted to um the reason why i wanted to go to nyac was because my shoulder was torn at the time and uh taking any shot i had a pretty big percentage of it popping out on me so i wanted to learn more upper body throwing so I was like, hey, man, I should go to, like, uh, NYAC, learn, learn from the Greco guys. But it never happened. But <laughs> that was, that was my, my logic for wanting to go to NYAC. And meeting the coach, one of, one of my teammates, his cousin was, like, a coach there. So, yeah. What was one of the best matches you had? And what was one of the worst matches you had? And I'll give you mine. <laughs> oh, man. I'm trying to think. Uh, the worst match I've ever had was probably against um, this kid. He was second in the state, and uh, and it's uh, the, I, I I wasn't notified beforehand, um, which is looking back on it now, it was probably a good idea that I wasn't notified of it. Yeah. Uh, but maybe like a little warning, like hey, this guy's got some skill. But uh, <laughs> uh, you can't you couldn't tell by looking at him. I don't know. Actually, <laughs> like you, you sh- Usually you, you look at the shoes, right? Like if it's like some sort of expensive wrestling shoe, you're like, okay, this kid's got, you know, um, you know, he's good enough that he that he's dedicated enough to, to buy shoes that, you know, he's not a noob. I don't know. But it's something with the shoes, like the price point of it. Like if it's expensive, most likely they're pretty good. I but disagree I never with really that, okay. I didn't <laughs> I don't know. But I, that that's how that's how we judged it at least. And usually we were always right, but then I was, I was, you know, I think I was going off a pretty good day that day. I was winning matches, and then I come across this one. He was second in the state. I had no idea. My coach obviously didn't tell me. My friends, every everyone on the bench knew, though. They were just like, yeah, good luck, man. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, all right. And, uh, as, dude, this, this the level of state, highly ranked state wrestlers, I don't understand. They're just... I don't know. They, they've drilled in that technique for forever. They just know how to. So as soon as that whistle, um, the whistle blew, I got taken down immediately. I was like, "What the heck just happened?" <laughs> and um, he just proceeded to beat the absolute shit out of me. And did I he tech just, you? Did he? Uh, no, he pinned me. Actually, pinned you? Uh, he didn't. He didn't. You know, shame me with that. Getting teched, I think, is worse than getting pinned. To be honest, you, you just get suffered every takedown just take yeah. down let them up take down <laughs> let them up you know you're just like wow you're just using me as like a takedown demonstration right i was just oh man but yeah that was probably my worst match i was, I was that was embarrassing it was it was it was horrible what was uh, your best match my best match oh man jeez what is that <laughs> um Man, there's so many. Uh, <laughs> Humble. Uh, okay, Humble so break. I have a. There was one match where, there, my 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 high school, there was a judo class, and I took that in place of gym, and we were learning some moves, and there was this one move called uh, se, seoi nage, um, which is basically your basic, shoulder throw, uh, arm throw. Except in this one, you drop to your knees, and then you throw. Right. So, um, and it was pretty uh, low risk, too. If you ended up failing it, it's not like you immediately get taken down. So I was like, F it. I'll try it. And I did it like five times against this one guy. I was like, dude, this is amazing. So I, I pulled off five Serenages, and I think that was probably my best one. 
Uh, I didn't really make it to counties. I got pinned the match that I was supposed to make it to counties my senior year. Uh, so that was that was pretty heartbreaking. But I think that was my, my best match. It's fun, man. High school wrestling was fun. It wasn't for me in college either. I didn't even attempt. I was like, I'm not going to. Oh, yeah. Point. It's 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 because those guys are getting ready to, you know, qualify for the Olympics. I mean, some of those guys, you know, yeah. at those top universities. So yeah. I didn't I didn't really mess around with that too much. But I loved it. Except, you know, I destroyed my shoulder with it, which I don't really regret. <laughs> it's just so fun. So you mentioned uh, taking people down and letting people up. That's kind of what I did my entire senior year of wrestling. I teched pretty much everybody except for three people. I lost one match. The other two I pinned. And, That's insane. Uh, what the hell? Um, I, you know what? PSAL, man. I wasn't good. They just weren't good either. Um, oh, okay. My best, my, I'll, I'll go with my best match first. Well, no, my worst match first was at a Farrell tournament in uh, Staten Island. Uh, Monsignor Farrell. He's facing a dude from South Brunswick. And in the first round, the first period, he, I took a shot and he spladled me. Do you know what a spladle is? Oh, what? That's horrible. <laughs> if I can find the video, I will attach it. But I don't know if I still have it because I might have deleted it out of rage. I had no you, idea what was going on. <laughs> did you do, um, usually they splayed off of high crotch, right? I, I went for an outside shot. The dude reached over, pulled me apart, and I was in a position that I could not get out of. Super confused. If you zoom in on my face in the video, you'll see how confused I was. And then at the end of it, the, right before the period ended, uh, I was pinned. And I was super confused. That was the end of my tournament for the day. Until you oh, get the buyback. that was the first round. Oh, that was wow. the first round. So... I think I was up like 4-2 at that point, too. But um, uh, then the buyback match. In wrestling, there's buyback matches. Uh, some tournaments, they have that for like a other tournament. And I faced off against a dude from Petrides. It's another school in Staten Island. I don't know if you know who that is. And I absolutely beat the shit out of this kid. I The only time I ever picked somebody up was in this match, and I threw him to the ground and pinned him within 90 seconds. Those are my two matches that were fun. <laughs> yeah, quick pins are the, are the best. Just I didn't like quick pins. Under. Especially if, oh. I knew, if I knew I was better than the person, I wanted him to... I wanted to practice. So I would take yeah. down and turn over and just like near fall, you know what I mean? Like I would practice with them. And if I knew That's that funny. it was a, a different kind of matchup, I would have to actually do stuff. But I wasn't very good, so it only went so far. I feel like I'd save them the shame. Getting teched is so embarrassing. <laughs> like, it's, might as well you, just end it. I, I've been teched a couple of times, and it was not embarrassing because the guy teaches you things as you're getting put into moves. So, like, you go for something that normally works on a, on a rookie, and it doesn't work on him. So it's like, aha, so when that comes to me, now I can do that. It teaches you things. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. So it's good practice. I like getting teched. But I also like teching people because it was also practice. All of my techs were in practice. Well, I got teched at Ascend. Uh, the practices that had all college wrestlers and people that were ranked. I wrestled someone that wasn't even ranked and I got teched. I was like, holy crap, this guy's not even ranked and he just demolished me. This is <laughs> insane. For anybody well, that doesn't like know what teching means, uh, in wrestling... When you beat the other person so badly that their your points are so much higher, they just stop the match, essentially. Yeah, the number is like 15. 15. <laughs> so if you're 15 points ahead of the other person, they just go, mercy rule, you're out. Yeah. All right, so, Lao Strength, let's talk about your powerlifting career, your monster numbers in the squat, your bench press, your deadlift. How the hell did you get a 585 back squat? Like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> How the hell did I get? Uh, funny, uh, I squatted uh, 500 when I was 16. Uh, what the fuck, man? Am I the only person that can't squat 500? What the hell's going on here? Yeah, well, that, that was like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I See, I started when I was um, 16. <laughs> uh, just built yeah, to squat. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was just built to squat. Like, I just have the long torso, short femur, and... It originally, it was a deadlift. Like I feel like everyone starts out that way. Right. For some reason, their deadlift is like their their bread and butter. But then eventually, like the squat just 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 started like climbing a lot higher than my my deadlift, and I was like, "What the hell's going on?" 
And then I was looking at the Olympic weightlifting squats, and it looked pretty similar to mine. And I was, you know, pretty upright in my position. Uh, but 585, um, the program, like, you know, you, you familiar with Smolov? Of course I'm familiar with Smolov. Yeah, so I, I, the, I got 585 off of that program, and I'm never going to do it again because it's, <laughs> it's so bad. So uh, you did real Smolov, not Smolov Jr.? Ah, uh, no, it was, this was legit. This was the real one, the, yeah. the man stuff. This is I, horrible. I couldn't, I couldn't hang with Smolov, so I did Smolov Jr. Two, two sessions in a row, and it didn't do anything for me. Because my squat is so bad, and I just I can't go, I can't get it higher. It's whatever. Yeah, it's like a whole thirteen. I want to say it's thirteen. Thirteen uh, weeks. And they they phase it out, and like uh, they have a like a starting phase where like get your body primed up. Yep. And then they have uh, phase one. They have this. I think it's cut out with rep sets of nine, seven, five, and three. Yeah. So one workout was four sets of nine with, like, some nuts, like 385. Yeah, so it was, like, uh, 65%. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, they went up percentages. And, you know, I remember one time doing finishing one of those four-by-nines and walking to the bathroom and just throwing up. I was like, this is, hor- <laughs> <laughs> this is horrible. Yeah. Did you do any of the other programs like a Wendler 531, Texas Method, Hack Squat program, or did you just stay straight small of and then sort of start to make your own? In the beginning, it was everything was 5x5. Five 5x5 by five. Okay. Five by five was, uh, I even use it to this day. Uh, I mean, not now because I have coaches helping me out now, but when I first started 5x5, five five, I thought like when I was a beginner, I was like 5x5, five five, how dumb, right? Five sets of five reps is like I could like breeze through that so easy, and then once the percentages started climbing, I was like, oh damn! Like I'm starting to build muscle and strength, you know. Uh, so that that's how I made all of my gains: five by five with bench squat and deadlift all at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, just basic stuff, you know. Once I cut out all the nonsense of like, like I started out with bodybuilding. I okay, this degree is gonna get my this sliver of my shoulder, something dumb, right? And I was like, once I cut out all the stupid complex exercises and stuck with the simple, you know, squat, bench, and deadlift, and row, front squat, I built so much more muscle, so much more mass, so much more strength. Yeah, I find that it's yeah. really simple and easy to build on power lifts, whereas mm-hmm. weightlifting, it is not quite so simple. So you still need to do those power lifts, but weightlifting is so much more complicated that you can spend years on it and move just a little bit and it's very frustrating have you ever done weightlifting or did you just bypass that completely and just be like i'm powerlifting it's fine it's going well for me which it is well i wanted i wanted to do both actually you still can um yeah yeah i could but i i choose not to now but i had uh so when i was uh i think i was still 16 or 17 uh yeah, so I was trying out cleans, I was trying out snatches, horrible technique. I think my best clean and jerk, just, you know, throwing it around, I did 205. My best clean was like 225. My best snatch, I never went over 135, I think. <laughs> I just snatched 135. Uh, and then um, after the, the big shoulder injury, I decided not to because um, just that overhead position was uh, was too much for my shoulder. And if I could just control it, with just holding it on the squat, keeping it tight on the bench press and deadlifts, you know, it doesn't really hurt my shoulder that much. Uh, so, yeah, I decided if I wanted longevity in some sort of barbell sport, I'd have to stick to powerlifting. Um, but if I was to do it now, I'd probably be fine because, you know, I already had surgery for it. <laughs> but uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't work now, though. I, I, I just love powerlifting too much. You built so much residual strength that you would just – a lot of your time would be spent on technique and just working the overhead squat, just getting comfortable with it. Oh, hold on a second. I'm getting like messages every four seconds, so my phone screen recording is just getting ru- ruined. Anyways, I'll re say that. <laughs> so you <laughs> built a lot of out, right? uh, yeah. You built a lot of residual strength, which would help you with the power with the weightlifting, because dude, you squat in almost six hundred pounds, and all you'd have to teach you is how to hold a barbell overhead. Essentially, you just power stuff for a little while. But being that you're in the powerlifting sport, um, have you competed 
or are you planning on competing? I know COVID kind of set the plans a little bit different. COVID was like this funny thing, because uh, it was more of a blessing than more of a nuisance in my case. Okay. Because um, I was coming off some pretty pretty horrible tendonitis in both of my knees, and I just didn't know when to stop. I was like, oh man, I'm, if I if I rest now, I'm gonna the competition's gonna blow by me. So I had that mentality. And then once COVID hit, I couldn't do anything, right? So I was like, okay, whatever. You know, this is rest for my knees. Um, but for competitions, I competed twice, uh, both unsanctioned and both at the same place. Um, if anyone is out there in Long Island, Gaglion Strength out in Farmingdale, uh, it's where Larry Wheels used to train, so you'll probably know. Um, I, I competed there twice. The first one was a beginner meet. Second one was, uh, I think, six months later. At a, it was a summer meet. Uh, and But no, my numbers aren't anywhere in the system yet. Uh, We're going to get you competing, man. Yeah, for real. I, but I don't even have any meets coming up right now. I think I might just take 2021 off, you know, see how this whole thing blows over. Because I, I would hate to compete in a mask. Just not my thing. <laughs> it's not a, that bad. You just you practice with it, you'll be fine. It's different yeah. in, with weightlifting. You're moving around a little bit differently, but for powerlifting, it's not that bad because you're static. Static lifts are a little bit different than the weightlifting stuff. But um, yeah, I feel like you, yeah, Go yeah. Ahead. You, you take in like a big breath and you just caught in with a mouthful of mask and you're just like, what the? <laughs> yeah, that's true. But you, when you practice with it, you get used to it, and it's not it's not as it's not that bad. It's not that annoying. But yeah. um. How is Long Island with COVID? Are, are things opening up? Have you had, uh, you're, you're working out out of your garage, so you're not going to a gym, right? No. Uh, yeah, I, I built it. Well, I didn't build it. I bought the stuff uh, right. back in the summertime because, uh, uh, you know, I wasn't, I didn't want to go to the gym. And uh, I, had to, I, I could pick equipment that was nice. So that was, that was the good part. Uh, yeah, I mean, in Long Island, let's see. I have a buddy of mine, restaurant. I they I think they have indoor now. Uh, they people can sit inside to eat. Uh, gyms are open. They've been open since um, they get somewhere in August. So so a a, a, good, a good amount of time now. Um, but it's just not you know people are people are doing stuff you know. It's it's just that I'm not really doing that much. <laughs> so you were working out at Gaglione Strength. No, 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 no. Uh, were, no. I competed there. I I would go there for like a couple of sessions just to you know you know hang out with with his crew and stuff. Um, but I, ne I was never really a client there. I was oh, never okay. coached by him. Um, I just liked hanging out there sometimes. I I helped um, I helped uh, load at a meet once w for him. Um, yeah, I just liked hanging out there. I I worked out at a at a Blink Fitness actually. <laughs> a lot of yeah, powerlifters yeah. going to Blink Fitness and even Planet Fitness. How does that? Why would you even go to Planet Fitness for powerlifting? There's no barbells. Super cheap. There. They got weights, but they don't have barbells. Like they have Smith they have machines. Not like a bars. Are you sure? Really? Yeah. Oh damn. Yeah. I thought it was just Smith machines. As long as I you don't, to... uh, as long as you don't slam the weights, they won't kick you out. How dumb is that rule? I I triggered that alarm once, and I was like, wasn't even. <laughs> I was like curling and then like I put them down and then they're like Yer. they're like lock alarm and I was like what they're like oh sir you need to put down the weights a little bit uh softer I'm like get the frick out of here are you kidding me <laughs> that, that was that was like I was like you're getting intimidated by people dropping weight like so you that's even going that's kind of like the next next transition here so like you went from a uh blink fitness now you're in your garage by yourself how much better do you think you'd do if you were in a more powerlifting friendly environment? I'd probably do a lot better yeah. because these people pro people have the same goals. They understand what a bench arch is, so they won't judge it. Uh, they understand sumo deadlift, so they won't judge that either. And these people <laughs> have been in, <laughs> been in this sport for a long time, so they they probably help me out a lot better than uh, the average gym bro that's like, hey man, instead of uh, arching your back like that, well, why don't you like do these... Uh, this weird uh, chest activate or whatever the hell they're doing. <laughs> but uh, I would probably, because 
it's like a, the environment when you're when people are screaming at you, you know. Kind of that, it's just your, these are your teammates essentially. You're working out your workout partners, and that's what that's what the best part about um, the gym is going there with your 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 buddies, your gym partner, and just lifting heavy weights and just encouraging one another. So that's the best part. You go to a Blink Fitness, mm -hmm. and everybody you look around, everybody's doing some weird shit, and it's not what you're doing, and you're like looking over at that guy with his cat back, and you're like, what the fuck am I doing here? And that you get well, into most a, of them, most of them are on cardio. Yeah, it's just or it's like people on the treadmills. It's it's not that yeah. ideal situation. So yeah. finding that that powerlifting friendly gym, even though it's going to cost you a little bit more, that's the environment you have to be in to thrive. So I highly mm -hmm. recommend when the gyms when you get more comfortable with going out, get into a powerlifting gym, man. You're fucking going to hit that 600 like within a week. Oh, I could. Um, I can't do it right now. Uh, we're still working our way to it because I'm still coming off my shoulder injury. Yeah. It, even though it was, a, it was like over a year ago, COVID happened, and then I had to relearn everything. Um, so I'm still in that process, but yeah. things are moving now. So it's, it's, we're getting up there again. Yeah. Who who do you, who is your coach? I have two coaches actually, which is kind of weird. <laughs> I have I have one guy helping me out with my bench press and one guy helping me out with my squat and deadlift. Usually you have one guy for all three. Uh, but I chose this weird approach to it, but it seems to be working. <laughs> That's cool. Who is it? Yeah. Uh, his, his name is, uh, Jacob, Jacob Hill and my bench press coach. Shout out to Connor drum, drummer Hauser. Uh, you can find them all on Instagram if nice. you want coaching from them. So your deadlift, your squat out exceeds your deadlift because clearly you're built to squat. Yeah. So what do you have to do to compensate, to build up that deadlift? What do I have to compensate? Uh, just practice technique a lot more for deadlift, honestly, because uh, I, I pull sumo at this current time, and my sumo technique's always been uh, hit or miss. Or I, I pick a stance where it's, it, it mimics my squat, because you know that's that's where yep. I get my, most of my power from, and that seems to be a sumo, like yep. a very pretty narrow sumo stance at this current time. Um, but yeah, that that's uh, I have to I have to make sure that when I'm at the deadlift, I'm you know in a good space of mind because uh, usually that's where I, I fall off. Because if if I if it feels heavy off the floor, I might just drop it, or it might it just might not budge. Right. So I really got to work on just positioning, you know, maybe more pause work, things like that. Uh, so yeah, it's really just more technique work in my case. You find yeah, that more, more low, do you get a lot of lower back exercises as accessories. It's hard to do any accessories with my limited stuff. Uh, but I, I do a lot of uh, conventional deadlifts, maybe stiff leg deadlifts, mm -hmm. uh, RDLs. We do that a lot. Because uh, uh, sumo deadlift, you're not going to build your, your lower back as much as a conventional deadlift. You know, it's, right. lower back activation is there, but it's yeah. not as much as a conventional deadlift. And what do you got going on for your bench? Like, do you, with that shoulder, do you use a lot of slingshot, or is it just straight pause work, five by fives, and just trying to rebuild the position? My shoulder's good now. Um, I had a surgery for it back in September of uh, 2019. Yes, 2019. September 2019. I had to go and repair my labrum. Uh, also had a bank cart lesion in there. Uh, but the first thing when I came back to bench pressing, was getting in better position, better arch. Uh, I, had to, I had to cut down that range of motion because um, pressing too far will, will hurt. Um, and also screwing the bar, you know, shoulder blades down, back and down. That that reduced, I bench with no pain now. Uh, when I first started coming back, it was horrible. It was, it was some messed up pain, but once the coach fixed up, you know, positioning, I, I bench with no pain now, so, but, to get back into it. I did a lot of pause work, a lot of uh a lot of floor presses. Yeah. Uh a lot of inverted rows. Uh those those get the positioning really nice. You know, people people bench press but they don't do the stuff <laughs> that's the 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 accessory work. They don't really do that too much because they don't like it and you know when they get injured they, they wonder, right? <laughs> the opposite chest. 
the back chest. Yeah, yeah. You gotta hit the back you chest like when that. you hit the front chest. Yeah, because like when you think about it, like what you're less, you know? They're they're making contact with the bench press. Why wouldn't you want to work that as well? You know? So the best way I explain bench pressing to people and to protect their shoulders and everything is you're you're trying to build that arch to connect to the bar. So the more connected oh, wow. you are to that bar, the better it's going to stay in that groove and in the right spot. Because once those shoulders start to flatten out, you're now disconnecting. Once you disconnect, that's where the injuries happen. So the better you can create that arch and build that position, the tighter the lift's going to be, the straighter it's going to be, and the, it's just going to look way smoother and be way smoother. So that's the best way I explain it when I have my athletes doing bench press. And you're almost digging your heels into the ground where your butt is barely touching it. It's almost turned into like a standing push press. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, that's the obviously, way I like to explain it. Yeah, when you allow the arch, obviously, now you get into like the extremes of it and you get people that have like this literally one millimeter press. Yeah, hey, but it's whatever. They can do it. I don't really care too much. <laughs> it's within the rules, man. If that's the yeah, rules, so that's, it's all good. Yeah. I don't understand Haters. how people bench with their heels off the ground and like they bench big numbers. Like I'm not, you're getting no leg drive out of that. That's a assessor movement. You know, yes. True. Larson press. Uh, but you also have to think about, you know, you know, power, power lifting, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're bench pressing and you know, they're disabled. They can't really use their legs. That's tr That's different. That's, yeah, that's yeah, a different yeah. story. <laughs> But yeah. people that have legs and they're not using them, it's like, hey, why? <laughs> yeah, like, you see this weird, like, when people get heavy on the bench press, their legs just start moving everywhere. It's like a weird tap dance, and you're just like, yeah, keep them planted, you know? The better you connect. Yeah, the better you can connect and make it a whole body exercise, the better that weight's going to move. Yeah. Definitely. All right, so we got into powerlifting. Now you started the World of Lifting podcast back in March, I guess when COVID hit, you decided podcasting needed your voice. What made you start it? What, what, what sparked that other than COVID? Boredom. Oh, yeah, actually, wait. Uh, <laughs> it was, boredom is part of COVID, I would imagine, because you, you find these weird. COVID was like this like, weird learning experience because I, was like, I, was, I wasn't doing powerlifting, so I wasn't doing my main hobby. So I was like, hey, I got to find something, right? And back in January, before, before the lockdown, I was already thinking about doing it. But I just pushed it off. Because so I was just like, oh, this is going to sound so dumb. You know, who's going to listen to this? Uh, but then um, I did my first interview in March. I started it. I was like, F it. I'll do it. Whatever. I don't care. And, you know, listening back to it, I was like, wow. I'm actually not. I'm pretty good at this. You know, just interviewing people. So... I started out of boredom, and then once it got a, once it got going, like I started inviting people to come, you know, on the show to just talk, and it just became like uh, just learning, you know, learning about people's stories, how they got into the sport, how they, you know, dealt with their issues and how they overcame them, and still achieve uh, some good numbers in the sport, and it just became, I'm like, wow, this is like. Uh, you know, just, just having, giving them the opportunity to speak about their story. And, you know, I get something out of it too. I learned something and, you know, you're just amazed by, by how people, how people, you know, do their thing in this world, especially in powerlifting. Yeah. You have a lot of big, uh, powerlifting names and what was your approach? Just messaging them on Instagram or did they contact you? How did, how did that, how did that go about? Man, if they contacted me, I'd, that'd be that'd be crazy. <laughs> but uh, I I just I, I contacted them. I just uh, I just I just DM'd them. I was hey, do you want to be on the podcast? You know, I, obviously I had you know this whole thing that I'll send like, hey, I'm a host. I'm the host of the podcast. Do you want to be on the podcast? And uh, I think I had one person. Like usually, if they don't want to be on the podcast, I just don't get a response from them. Sometimes they'll just say I'm not interested, but thank you. Uh, but yeah, that's how usually how I do it. Through all through Instagram, I just DM them. Don't you just feel sad when nobody when they just don't answer you? 
Yeah, I'm just used to it by now. I've DM'd <laughs> a lot of people. It's just like whatever, you know. Or or or, it's, or it makes sense because uh, some of these people have like uh, thousands and thousands of followers. So I'm pretty sure they just sometimes I just delete all their their right um, requests of, of DMs, and sometimes I just get lost with it. So sometimes they just, they probably never open it, you know. So they probably didn't even know that I DM'd them. I but, get you know. I get sad. I'll message somebody and I'll say uh, I'll read that they saw it, but they didn't respond, and I'm just like. Dude, you can't just say no. <laughs> that happened once to me. Uh, there was this, uh, there's a power lifter that was paralyzed in one arm. Okay. And he competes, but he only has the function of his right? No, left. I, I forgot. One of his arms is working, and he still competes. He, could, he just squats, holding the bar with just one arm. He bench presses the bar with just one arm, deadlifts with one arm. Uh, and you know he just left my message on uh, on red. I was like, oh damn. <laughs> Guess he doesn't want to be uh, be interviewed. But what whatever, that guy's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Too cool for you. Yeah. Who do you yeah, have yeah, uh, cool coming up? Oh shoot. Oh, okay, this is before. Okay, I have. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar, Dr. Aaron Horshig of Squat University. I was looking for his thing. Content. When is because you posted that a while ago that you were trying to talk to him. Yeah, so but he is. It's confirmed. It's uh, it's on the twenty fourth. Awesome. So, yeah, I that's like usually with these big powerlifters. Uh, like if you guys ever if you guys listen to my episode with James Strickland, if you guys don't know James Strickland, he bench pressed six seventy five and he's training for seven hundred, and he's pretty famous, you know. And I I was like starstruck and I was nervous and, you know, I sounded like an idiot the whole episode because I was like fumbling over my words so. I think I got over that now. So I think the episode, the doc, Dr. Horshake like seems like a chill dude. Just looking at his videos. Yeah. So I'm just like, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I just gotta treat him like any other guest. Obviously, he's not any other guest. Like he's like he has a million followers on Instagram, and I have to prepare a lot more for that one. But I do have uh, Dr. John Patrizzo coming up. I saw uh, he's him a doctor too. of physical therapy. Yeah. And I have uh, Alyssa Farrell. She's gonna be on the podcast soon. She's a collegiate. Well, she's not. She used to be a thrower uh, for discus, shot, uh, javelin, and she, she has a lot of good good information to give out. Because I'm trying to expand to general fitness as well. Because nice. powerlifting is uh, kind of niche, you know. Yeah, for sure, man. All right, man. We're gonna wrap this one up. Um, you guys. Better listen to World of Lifting podcast. Alan Lau does an awesome job. He interviews a lot of really awesome people, as you heard. And Squat University is going to be on there at the end of the month. 24th, you said, right? Yes, 24th. So you're on Spotify, Anchor, Breaker, Apple. What else you got? I think Google, too. But there's there's so many. Like there, yeah. uh, Anchor does a really good job of like distributing it to, like, they say like eight platforms. I think I have it on like 12. Like it's so weird. But I link to Apple, Spotify, and Google. That's the one I you know, usually link them to. But yeah. Yeah, Anchor does a good job. Um, Alan, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, I hope you enjoyed yeah. it as much as I did. <laughs> yeah, I definitely did. It was, it was a good time. Second and time being a guest ever. So awesome. it was good. Yeah. If you're in town or if you want to come out for our competition on the 28th, you are more than welcome to. I'll have you load the bar over here for weightlifting. You can see some savage. You guys have a competition? Oh, yeah. March 28th. We're good to go. Just straight up weightlifting or? Weightlifting. Oh, man. Snatch and clean and jerk? Damn. Come see some savages lift some weights. And then we could it's actually mis- meet in person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <If you want. laughs> That's a funny thing about this, right? I never yeah. meet any of the guests in person. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> Social distancing. <laughs> At its finest. Yeah. All right, brother. Any last words for your your people here? No. Just just uh, follow me on at World of Lifting Podcast. Uh, follow me at Lao Strength and listen to my podcast. Subscribe. Listen to it. Hopefully, you guys get something out of it. So, hopefully, you guys enjoy it. But, yeah, thanks for having me on, man. It was a good time. Thank you for coming on. Remember, age is inevitable. Weakness is not. So, get out there and lift some shit, guys. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening. Thanks for watching today's Marblecast. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any content. Check out our Spreadshirt shop to grab some swag. And if you would like to support the Marblecast, please head over to anchor.fm. All of the links are in the description, and it helps us out to keep the channel running. Thanks so much, guys. See you next time.